I will Google unveiled the Pixel Fold at its I.O. conference yesterday, marking its first foray into the foldable smartphone market. The move into the space leaves one notable exception among all these big players. Apple. So why hasn't it jumped on the bandwagon? Joining us now to discuss is Ryan Reed, the Program Vice President for IDC's mobile device tracker suite. Good to have you on the show, Ryan. So first want to really get some background here, starting with Google's phone here. So this is this Pixel Fold, $1,799 here. Tell me, why do we need this? Why is Google even entering this space right now? Yeah, well, thanks for having me on as always. Um, Good to talk to you again. I think I, the short answer is I think it's uh, a little bit of follow of the leader in the hardware space. Uh, if you think about smartphones, tablets, uh, even PCs to some extent, um, you know, the hardware designs have gotten somewhat boring. You know, things have gotten bigger, the glass is there, things are thinner. We've passed all those stages and the rest of the industry putting Apple aside uh, certainly the rest of the phone industry in the Android space has already gone into this uh, foldable form factor. So it's, it's sort of follow the leader. And, um, you know, anyways, I, that's that's really what it is. Uh, there, we're not seeing the demand for these products just yet. I'm not completely pessimistic on the category in the long run, but I think it certainly has its short term challenges. And that's the thing, like, you know, I was, I was asking around as to who actually has a foldable phone. I think only one person that I've spoken to actually yeah. has one. So what is actually going to be driving the demand? And people already pay so much for the phones they have. What is going to make them want to switch to these sorts of devices? Yeah, I, I think it's a good question. Certainly not price, right? I mean, even at, you know, $1,800, right. <laughs> you know, let's just backtrack, right? I mean, when Samsung lost, launched the first, I think, foldable back in 2019, it, it was, you know, twenty six, twenty seven hundred dollars if I'm not mistaken. So it, it's come down and there's foldable phones. I, I was in China a few weeks ago uh, looking at some some phones from some of those OEMs and Android space um, that are of the flip form factor, but still uh, and they're six, seven hundred US dollars cheaper than this. So um, what's driving Google around this? I, I, I don't quite know uh, other than maybe um, the ability to get their software developers that follow Android to develop for this variation uh, of, you know, a foldable ecosystem, which it, it does need variations of the application. So there is something there. From To, to answer your question, the consumer, what's going to drive them to buy this? I, I don't see anything until the use case really uh, shows up. And I think right now what we've seen, uh, the, the buyers uh, globally on this have been what we would consider early adopters, uh, not what's going to drive the, the needle. So it's really going to need a proven use case and like I said, maybe Google is using this hardware as a way to get their developers to develop on that. And then ultimately could, you know, help other Android OEMs. But it, it's kind of a, you know, it's always a chicken and egg with, with them, you know, because you never quite understand which side is really about driving the Android ecosystem versus the Google hardware ecosystem. And, you know, Apple not jumping into this foray just yet. Samsung sort of off to the races for now. But why do you think Apple hasn't stepped into this space yet? Honestly, I think it's uh, they, they understand the market right now and they understand that the demand isn't there. Um, and this is not new. I mean, I was listening to your previous segment on AI, which I, was very interesting. And I, I think, you know, it, Apple's also not one that has spoken up about generative AI. They have not you know made a public statement about a foldable phone. They've also, you know, by media sort of headlines, uh, continued to delay the, you know, their sort of AR or VR uh, headset. And, and that, to me, I think hopefully the industry knows this. They have had and they've been testing the capabilities on everything, including foldable phones for a while. I, I think that they wait till the pulse on the industry and from a demand standpoint is right. And I don't think it's right right now. And so then just quickly, market leaders in this space. Yeah, uh, Samsung owns 80% of this market. I think to be to be precise, uh, last year, I think our, our data was 82% of the global foldable phone. And just to be clear, for those that look at the specifics, that folds this way and also flips. Any type of smartphone where the screen bends, um, they own 80% of that market. Let's just call it that. And from a, a volume standpoint, the market almost doubled last year alone, went from 8 million units in 21 to about 14 
million uh, last year, and we assume it's going to be somewhere around 21, 22 million units this year. So yeah, from a growth standpoint, it's growing. It's coming from a zero base. Uh, and keep in mind, we're talking about a, a market size that's 1.2 billion. So we're talking about a, a percentage point. We're also talking about a time where the economy is not good. People are not willing to spend more and it's not proven use case. So again, it's a really tough ask right now to get people to spend more on something that they don't quite know yet that they need it. Again, I'm not completely pessimistic in the long term. I think that use cases can be proven around foldable displays. I don't think that they're there yet. Yeah, plus I'll have to see how much it costs if I drop it as well. Something that you know we're all going to do as well. A big thank you there to Ryan Reith, Program Vice President for IDC's Mobile Device Tracker Suite. Thanks so much.